eight years as a registered nurse, correct? Yes. In Michigan? Yes. Why do you stop? Well, uh, you know, as they say, well, okay, so I, well, I, when I was working, I guess, in adult, I was doing like webcam and stuff. Okay. So I thought, oh yeah, I can do this. And then no one will ever find out. And it was true when it was just webcam. I blocked the state of Michigan. I blocked Florida where my mom was living at that time. So I was blocking, you know, all these states and, and remained anonymous for a while. And then someone in one of my rooms had said, have you ever thought of, you know, doing like porn or adult film? And I thought, wow, like I enjoy it in my personal life, but I don't know that I could do it. I just thought I was naive. I thought that the money was so much better um, in, in film. So I thought I'll do it because at that time there was a lot going on in my family uh, financially with, with my immediate family and, and what was normal for me for a long time became very erratic and very dysfunctional. Okay. So my world around me was kind of crumbling and I was desperate to find a way to keep my family together and to keep the financial um, stability within my family and, and a little bit of my extended family um, together. So I did it and uh, I didn't know a thing about it. I didn't know anybody out there. I just took the plunge and I really thought no one would find out. I didn't realize how large or how vast the internet was. Like it's huge. So after six months of doing film, people found out and I thought, oh gosh, like, what do I do? So my husband was like, I don't, I don't care like what people think. And I said, I don't either. However, like, I don't, I don't know. There's no turning back. He's like, okay, well go big or go home. What do you think? I said, what do you think? And he's like, go big baby. Like who cares? Like just do whatever works for us. And that's it. So we never looked back. Wow. Okay. So uh, a few follow-ups, if I can, when you're talking about your world crumbling around you, yeah. Yeah. what do you, what do you mean by that? I mean, um, financial problems, health problems, what is going on? Yeah, all of the above. So my parents who were married and stable for so long are now divorced or going through the process of divorce. My mom becomes ill. My sister's brutally beaten and um, hospitalized. So, and she has two young kids. I have, um, you know, our daughter and my husband was injured also off of work in the line of duty. So I had just like so much going on and me being, I guess, just the, the person that I am, I had to fix it. I had to do something, you know, so I picked up overtime at the hospital, but it really wasn't enough. I was trying to help my sister, uh, you know, and her kids and, and, you know, school clothes and her bills and, and whatever, like we all have crap. However, for me, like I, there is nothing that I won't do for my, my family. And I don't want to say I did it all for my family, but that was kind of what led to the film part because the, the camming was just fun and sexy and, you know, making extra money, you know, or whatever. Um, and it, I mean, it was for my family, but I don't know how to explain it, but like taking the big plunge, I guess, is kind of when things really got crappy. You know, so there's like a couple things led me to camming and then things just went crazy. So I, that's when I took the plunge for, uh, for film. Could I ask? I hope what, that's not confusing, but it was no, like one to the other. Like, Jesus, I get it. It's like a snowball. <laughs> um, you mentioned your sister was brutally beaten. What happened? Yeah. So she was in a really, really uh, abusive marriage for about nine years. And, you know, we never knew. We just thought, hey, he's like just... Um, and I, I try not to speak badly, although I do not um, do not like this human being to this day. But I still remain to be or remain to you know classy and not uh, anyway. So we just thought he was just a controlling husband. And you know, as much as my mom and and myself tried to, um, I guess, be there and say you know offer options like are you you know is everything okay and you know and she denied it. And I and when I had. Um, my nieces, I would, you know, I would kind of look and check, like, are there any signs, you know, of like abuse or anything like that. So I didn't see anything on the kids, but I was just, I guess, not thinking that it was her, like he was doing things to her, you know? So when, when that happened, it was, I don't know, you know, you blame yourself, like how come I didn't see the signs or, and I'm older sister, like I should have done something, you know, or done more or whatever, but it, it's really hard because he, you know, did a really good job of isolating her and 
kind of keeping her from the family. And, and, you know, it was a rough nine years, you know, it was a very strained relationship between my sister and I, and, um, and, you know, so yeah, it was, it was bad. It was really bad. And I'm just grateful that my cousin came over that night because if she wouldn't have, uh, she would have bled internally. She was going into shock and it was wow. very bad. It was, it was, it was bad. So, so I'm so grateful that, uh, she is, boy, I don't have her get teared up, but yeah, thanks. But yeah, so it was crazy, but, but we're good. She's good. <laughs> she's okay now. Oh yeah. She's fantastic. She's in like, she's in a great, great relationship. Um, she's engaged. Um, she, yeah, she's doing great. So I'm like so proud and so happy because they say it takes a woman seven times, I guess, like they try to leave like around seven times before they actually do. So, and some people don't ever have the courage, you know, I don't know what that's like and I can't imagine what she went through. Uh, and it's still difficult to talk about for her and, uh, and, and it'll never know everything, you know, it's like on her terms. So yeah. Oh, one last question on this. What yeah. happened to the husband? Well, he did go to jail for a short time. However, I do believe that um, she was truly afraid to do to press charges further mm. uh, out of fear of retaliation. So she didn't pursue that. And he walks free to this day. And he's in a crappy relationship. I think the one good thing that came out of it is um, that he is fearful of, or he won't do that to, to his new wife, you know, even though I know the relationship isn't great, uh, because, you know, he knows that he, ultimately he will go to jail. So, I mean, it's going to be longer. The consequences will be more severe. So, um, but you know, he's still to this day, they were at a, um, something recently and he came up to her and he says, Oh, do I make you, a, do I scare you or something like that? Like he's just the master of manipulation. So um, I wish my husband would have beat his ass on my mom's 50th birthday when she, when he had him up against the wall and it took seven years for my husband to put his hands on him. But then he saw my nieces in the car and, and looked over and saw they were afraid. He set him down. He's like, it's your lucky day, motherfucker. Can I say that? Yes. He said, because you're, you would have needed a dentist. He said, uh, you were going to become a man today, son. Like, and it was bad. So anyway, so uh, crazy. Wow. <laughs> anyway, family is just fun, isn't yes, it? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It is fun. Um, so, in, in, I'm in glad a, he's in a, you know, out of the picture. So, but my sister still kind of has to see him, you know, because of their kids. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. In, in a very weird way. Um, is it possible that if these things aren't happening around you, as you say, your, your world is yeah. crumbling, that you yeah. don't go down this path, you don't go down, you know, you, you're just kind of the registered nurse who's doing some stuff on the side. Yeah. Is it possible that yeah. this all led to this whole other life for you? I don't, I don't want to say, uh, you know, that like, oh, because of, or, or use that as like an, like a, a scapegoat or, you know, but I don't know that I would have felt compelled to, to take it further. I probably just would have had fun, been helping my sister out here and there. And maybe, you know, and it's not all my sister, like we were having financial things too. We were living paycheck to paycheck at that time. It was just, there was a lot. And then, you know, my dad, God rest his soul up there. Um, he was, um, he went from like being Clark Griswold to being like, wait, what's that one movie with the, the, the bad Santa? Oh, I think it's yeah, called Bad. But what's bad the Santa. actor? Um, oh, uh, Billy, Billy Bob, Bob Thorne. Bob. Yes. Okay, Billy he Bob. became. He went from that extreme to the other, and I love him. But it was like he became this man I didn't know. Had an affair, you know. Had this whole other family paying for college for a, a student, like a child that he doesn't even know, and not paying for my school. And I'm taking care of my mom, carrying up three flights of stairs because she's sick, and you know, we drain the bank account. So it was just like, what, what is happening? Like, wow. Jesus, like, it was just, you know, and a lot of people have it the other way, right? Like their childhood sucks. And then maybe they make amends with their family and, um, you know, things happen for a reason. And I'm not mad. Like I don't hold, I don't have any ill feeling. Like, I just don't think it's healthy. So like, I forgave my dad, you know, uh, before he passed and, um, yeah, but it was, it was just the opposite. So first 18, 19 years. And then, all of this like craziness happened. So whew, it was a roller coaster. <laughs> did, did the hospital that you were working at, did they tell you that you had to leave or did you decide to drop that and go full time into adult? Actually, I was working at the uh, county jail because 
it worked out really well and it was a lot of fun. So I went from uh, hospital nursing to county jail, prison nursing. Like it was, it was awesome. I what loved is that, it. What's so awesome about that? Well, okay. So my husband being a police officer, former police officer, I wanted to be able to relate. I was like, gosh, why does he ever want to talk about work? Well, I realized like he sees the worst of the worst all day, every day, like kids abused and people just, you know, um, you know, just committing, I mean, crime sucks, but like just horrific things. So I thought, okay, I can go into the jail and I can learn. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, that was, that was, I, in six months, I developed more street smarts than I did my entire life. But, you know, I was beat up for six months in there, you know, because I was, you know, so nice and like, you know, like the world is all sunshine and rainbows, you know, and, um, boy, it was a rude awakening. It was a really cool experience though. And uh, again, like I, I think everything in life, everything that happens, you learn from it or, you know, you can sit and like complain about it or you can kind of try to make it into, you know, a positive thing. So I loved it. I had fun. So after six months, they weren't cat calling nurse Michelle. That's my real name, whatever it's on Google. I, it is what it is. You know, it was, okay, line up, have your pill, you know, be ready, no BS, you know, no hoarding your pills. You're, I'm not waiting if you're not lined up for, for you know, med pass, then you don't get your meds. Like I don't have time to waste. Like I have a job to do, you better respect that. So, um, because I'm the only person in this, or one of the only people that will, will really give two shits if you drop to the floor, okay? Because these guards aren't gonna be doing CPR. They're gonna pump on your chest with their foot, I guarantee it, because they just don't give a shit, you know? So, yeah. Some did, wow. and I don't speak for all of them, but you know, a lot of times I think we become jaded and cynical when we're surrounded in an environment like that, and um, very easy to, to to have that happen. But you know, my moral compass is I don't know, it is what it is. When you decide to go full time into film and pursue this career full time, you are married, correct? Yes, to my high school sweetheart. I've known to since I was eight. You've known since you were eight. Mm -hmm. What a mensch. Uh, this guy sounds like a great human being. Uh, he has no problem. I mean, you know, let's just call it like it is. Like his yeah, wife yeah. is out. So, mm -hmm. and, and you are having, you know. Relations. Uh, relations, if, if that's the best way of putting it, um, with other individuals, not named him. He's okay with this? Yeah, you know, he is because he's just really secure with, with uh, who he is. And the act itself, um, I don't want to say it doesn't have meaning. It, it to me, um, well, I always say what you do does not define who you are. And there's a real difference between like when I think of just human behavior or animalistic behavior, even though we're calling it a sexual art. So I'm kind of contradicting, contradict, can I talk today? Contradicting myself. You know, it is supposed to be an art, a form of entertainment. However, in my mind, it is just, it is very like human it's just raw it, it means nothing for me there's no emotion i don't feel any connection that uh hormone that is released oxytocin I, i'm not it, it's not it doesn't i don't know i just don't associate that act with any feeling i guess unless i'm with my husband period like it doesn't mean anything i don't want to call this person i don't want to text you i don't care if it was the best experience ever i don't care I don't love you. I feel nothing for you. I have no emotion. I respect you as a person, as a performer, as a colleague, but I don't care if I ever talk to you again. Like I, and it sounds so cold and callous, but for me, um, that act, like it, it, it truly has no meaning if there is no emotion and if I have no connection and if I have no, um, uh, I don't know, it's just so different and I can't explain it. It just means something to me. Was it always that way for you or was that something that you had to develop over time? You have to almost become immune to it. No, because for me, like, no, don't get me wrong. Am I, you're feeling something. I'm not numb. I enjoy the act. It's great. Or I wouldn't do it. Right. I mean, right. I don't, well, there are some, I'm not going to lie that they're talking about what they're going to be eating. You know, oh, I can't wait to eat this salad. Here we are. Or this chicken, you know, and I'm like, I'm getting ready to like, like, we're, 
what, what's happening here? Like, <laughs> oh man, like this, damn it. Then it kind of ruins it. Like, you know, sometimes the like, girls and even sometimes the guys, you can tell like, is this guy like playing on the same, you know, or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say? Like which uh, switch hitter here. So, <laughs> okay, so I get it. for me, I'm just like, okay, I, I, I don't know he's not, you know, so whatever, but you know, it, it's, it feels good. It's enjoyable, but it, it's meaningless to me unless it's with someone I love, you know? That's and it. just curious, I mean, your job is your job. And when you're out <laughs> there um, acting, performing, and then you come home, I mean, at some point, you know, too much of chicken is not very, you know, appetizing, right? Too much yeah. of anything isn't a good thing. And so right. how do you, exactly. how do you have, you know, the ability to then have a normal marriage with your husband? Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Well, I think for me, it was a lot easier because I don't live out there and I, it doesn't like encompass me. It's not who I really identify as. I feel like I have an identity outside of Kendra where I feel a lot of these performers, both male and female, they, they don't really have a true sense of self or they don't really, maybe they don't um, value or, or know how to operate outside of their alter ego. And for me, my life is like so much more like, yeah, Kendra, whatever, like, you know, cool. She's cool. But really, um, I enjoy being wife, mom, friend, daughter, like that's who I am. Like that makes me feel good. And, um, you know, yeah. So for me, and, and then too, like, I didn't shoot a ton. So I wasn't out there weeks and, you know, I, I go out for like maybe four or five days, come home. You know, so it was like very short. I didn't shoot a ton all the time. I wasn't a yes girl. I didn't do things that, well, sometimes I'm not going to lie. I did some dumb crap. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm having fun. I'm like, why, why would I do that? Like I'm stupid looking back, but um, yeah, whatever. I'm going to go there. So, but at the end of the day, you know, I know who I am outside of that. And I'm not ashamed of, you know, what I do because I'm proud of my sexuality and I don't like the double standard associated with it. I think it's crap. And that's a whole nother story for another day. Which double However, standard? Which one are like, you referring to? If a male, female performers, right? Male. Okay. Oh yeah. You're a boss. You're a pimp. Oh gotcha. yeah. You're getting all these ladies, you know, but a, a woman does it and she's this, she's that. And you know, that's not okay. I think sex is natural, right? Oh God. I almost quoted a song. Sex feels natural. Sex feels good. Anyway, whatever. It's an old song, but, um, and I think we should just embrace it and be sex positive. And just like, if there's two consenting adults, let them do what makes them happy, right? If they're not hurting animals, children, you know, or each other, then, you know, well, I guess unless they want to, um, just let them be free, you know, let them do what they want to do. Life is too short. When I die, God forbid, whatever that is, I always say like, are people going to really care if my house is clean? Cause I'm a little crazy about it, <laughs> but you know, or are they going to really care like what I did, right? I think people will remember you by how you made them feel, right? Like more of the positive things, or at least I hope, you know, and I, not that I view that as a negative thing, but they're not going to be like, oh yeah, she was this, that. No, I, I know that I, I do enough good and I feel good about it. And I feel okay when I go to bed at night, like I rest very easy at night knowing I do what is right and like and I don't know and I give and I don't care if people say oh you're gonna go broke you know you donate you do this you know what I don't care I don't care like I'll do what I want to do and he's not telling me not to and the world sure isn't gonna tell me not to because I don't give a shit like I'm a good human and I know it so I'm assuming your daughter knows what you do for a living well in 10 year old terms yes right how, how do you explain that to her and when do you first explain it to her Oh my God. Good question. And I struggled with that question for so long and I thought, Oh my God, like, Oh geez, like, what the hell? Like, how am I going to tell her? Because I don't want her to do. And that sounds hypocritical, right? However, I feel she won't have to, but I, there was a gun to my head to do it. I just think the opportunities in life for her, and her, her path is just going to be different, you know, um, because we're, we're alike, but we're different. So I started uh, telling her when she was a little bit, she was like six or seven. I said, you know, 
because we were at an event and somebody had called out my name and, and she's like, why are they calling you that mom? I'm like, mm. you know, it's like her mommy she had said at that time, you know, and I kind of explained, well, I, I do have a model name and, you know, for work or whatever. And it's like each year that as she developed, you know, I, my husband and I kind of talked to her about things and um, she brought it up to me. She was just before her 10th birthday. She says, you know, mom, kids know more than you think they know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, interesting. Now she has some friends who are older, like fifth and sixth graders. Now they're boys, those little shits. I love them, but you know, they're, I don't know. They're curious. Right. So she's like, you know, mom, I might not always like what you do or like agree with what you do for work. She says, but I have to respect it. She goes, cause it's going down either way. And dad respects it. And dad knows she goes, I have to respect it. I can't do anything about it. And I said, Whew. like, I just was like, I don't even know what to say. Like, where did this 10 year old come from with her, how, how she's thinking. Right. So I said, well, I really appreciate that. I said, because, you know, the last thing I would ever want would be for you to not love me or hate me for something that I did. I said, and I was worried that you would be angry with me. And she's like, you're my mom. I would never, you know, I love you, mom. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I love you too. And, and I said, but be prepared. You know, people are, no matter what you do in life, whether it's good, bad, it doesn't matter. I said, people are going to say positive things, but they're also going to say a lot of negative things. I said, and I'm sorry if people say something to you that, that will hurt, hurt your feelings, you know, because of me. I said, I, I you know, I, I can't control what people think or say. And I said, they are just words at the end of the day. I said, and I don't care what people say. And um, I know it's different for you. She says, oh, I don't care. She goes, I'll just choke them out, mom. <laughs> like hmm. she was like very matter of fact and ve and she's very protective. So um, I'm not say gonna say it's not going to affect her, but I just, I guess I wanted to assure her that, you know, she can talk to us. Thank you for watching this portion of the Ariel Hawani show for the entire conversation. I do suggest you check it out. Click here.